Hey everyone, it's Jewel, and tonight we're going out to some art gallery openings in central London and I thought I'd take you along. I've been really excited for tonight because a lot of galleries are opening for the first time after their summer holiday. There's also a couple launch parties tonight for some new gallery and art spaces, so I'm excited to check them out. Our first stop tonight is Paradise Row. And this was the opening not only of their exhibition, but also of their new gallery space. So Paradise Row previously had a gallery in East London, and they've now reopened this space in Central London as a year-long curatorial project. And what's really neat about this project is that unlike a lot of contemporary art spaces, especially in Central London, this is all non-profit. So for each show that the gallery puts on, the artist and curator will pick a specific charity to donate all proceeds to. Along with the art on display, I also felt like the gallery space itself was really beautiful, and the designers behind that were Gollum Architecture Studios. And another nice touch of the space was this car out front decorated with neon and fluorescent lights and painted, and it really just made like a connection between the street into the gallery, which I thought was really beautiful. This exhibition is titled Hawala, and it's a group exhibition exploring the relationships between Hawala, which is a South Asian trust and money exchange system, and they're comparing that with blockchain technology. And it's pretty interesting because the artists are showing physical works and also digital works that are presented as a single NFT. The show is curated by Shazad Dawood and it's running until the 29th of October. We went to our first uh, stop on the gallery tour. The space was really cool. Yeah. Um, and the art was nice. It was nice to see. It was nice, yeah. On to our next uh, gallery. Yeah, we're one Peroni in. we found it's like an infinity room our next stop was carpenter's workshop gallery which was showing works by Juan min park these are all pieces of furniture and they honestly command so much space and attention that they're just like art pieces or sculpture. I was really surprised to find out that they're actually made of metal. I thought that this was all stone or carved in some way, but it is metal and the kind of reflective surface on the top is actually made of resin. And I really love the shapes of these pieces and when you're there in person seeing them, the tabletops are just so thin. <laughs> it's incredible. And the chair, you can see that the back of the chair is so thin. I really recommend looking at it in person and you can enjoy all the beauty. Um, also love that the gallery included really long text and also a video of the artist speaking about his work um, to give you more information and background on what you're looking at. Okay, we just went to our second gallery stop. We weren't allowed in Hoffa. Yeah. Because <laughs> we weren't on the guest list. Even though I tried the RSVP, I guess it's like invite only. Um, but then we went to a workshop place. I'll put the proper name in there. But yeah, it was super posh. It was a little too fancy for us. It was like servers with wine and everyone was French. Um, but it was cool. It was nice to see. The tables were neat. It was a, a Korean artist. Yeah, like the metal table looks so nice. Yeah, but yeah, now we're off to the next gallery. We were off to Stephen Friedman Gallery, which was showing works by American artist Marina Adams. And her works were really interesting. Um, they were kind of simple at first look. They had very bright colors and just kind of these simple, almost geometric shapes. But as I was looking at them, I really started to appreciate these really unique color combination that she uses. And you know, with each palette, she's only using a few colors, but these pairings of them are so kind of, and the colors don't always go, seem to go so well together, but then they create these beautiful compositions. I also really liked, here I'm zooming in on kind of the texture of the work. There's spots in the canvas that are almost like see-through 
and then areas where colors are bleeding into other areas. So there's this kind of sense of imperfection, a bit of improvisation in her work as well that I thought was really interesting because from afar it looked kind of geometric and almost like too well done. And then as you get closer, you kind of start noticing these new aspects. The show's going to be running until the 23rd of October, so make sure to check it out when you can. Our next stop was Frith Street Gallery, and this was showing works by Tacita Dean, which were commissioned by the London Ballet as set designs for their new show and world premiere of the Dante Project. And I think honestly this might have been my favorite exhibition that we went to this evening. Um, the scale was so much larger than the other works we had been looking at, so I think it just really drew me in and it felt a lot more all-encompassing and really you could focus on the details of the work and uh, yeah I guess just for fun um, me and Iad were being detectives and trying to figure out the medium and the subject of this piece without reading any of the materials first so we didn't even know that this was a set design at the time and we were noticing the texture of the work. It kind of looked like a photograph, but with this kind of washed out color and washed out texture. And we we're also seeing that some of these, some of the colors of the objects were a bit strange. So even though the tree was green, which seemed to make sense, some of the other details, the coloring didn't necessarily match real life, obviously. Um, I was really stuck on this parking sign that was like a blue-green color instead of red and I could recognize that this was probably in America, maybe California, um, but the signs were different colors and we thought it was a negative but then maybe that didn't make sense because the tree was green already. So our best guess with it was that it was a negative of a photograph but then the tree was meant to stay green. And Ed had the good idea here, he's using like an Instagram filter that makes a negative of images. So we made a negative of what we thought was a negative. And it seemed to check out, the parking sign was now red. And like the colors looked a bit more normal, but this tree now was this really bright blue color. So we thought, oh, maybe this does mean that the tree was kept the original green and everything else was negative but we later found out that this was really just a negative. These are actually really unique. They're jacaranda trees <laughs> um, from Los Angeles, which bloom in late spring. And apparently the entire foliage turns into purple blossoms without any leaves. So it really was just a true negative of the image. And what we were seeing with the filter, that like bright blue is apparently what these trees actually look like when they're in bloom. But it was honestly really fun and I recommend um, doing this at, when you're at museums and galleries, just trying to be a detective and figure out what the medium or the subject or you know meaning of the work is before reading any text about it. And next here we are at Rhodes Contemporary Art showing works by Anushka Merchandani in her show entitled Just Between Us. And her art is really beautiful. It's usually portraits done in these kind of simple textures and layers and all really composed through simple line work and these blocks of colors. And they're really, I, I don't know, I found them very beautiful. Um, I like her use of color and I'm a sucker for these kind of line drawing portraits. Um, they're a bit trendy right now, but she does it really nice. And her figures are usually kind of in more domestic or personal settings, so we're kind of seeing people probably in their own homes and kind of in solitude. Makes you think about COVID and how we've all been at home for the last year. But they're really beautiful. I also love her use of negative space. So a lot of her works, they have this kind of plain background, and the background also becomes part of the subject as these lines are drawn. Yeah, and one cool thing too is that was that the artist was present at this opening. Um, she's in America. She's based in America typically, but she came for the opening, and people were able to talk with her, and she was chatting about her art, 
So that's really interesting and one of the cool things about going to these openings. The show will be running until the 16th of October. And finally, we made it to the last gallery or art event of the evening. This was the NFT exhibition presented by Institute and Unit London. And it was so crazy when we got there. Um, we were walking up to the venue and we saw a huge line of people out front. And we were like, oh my gosh, is there a club here? What is everyone waiting here for? And no, it was the line for this event. Um, we had to wait kind of a while just to get in but once we were in it was super worth it we got to see all of these different nfts on display uh, there's also we got drink tokens with a full bar i'm not sure how i feel about nfts yet that is probably a conversation for another time but it was my first time seeing a full exhibition only of nfts and it was really interesting uh, i'm glad that i went and it's nice to see where the art world could be heading I think whether or not NFTs are specifically what catch on, I think the world, the art world is heading a bit more digital. So it's, I think, good to see these different types of exhibitions. And that's all for today's video, but make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on art events in London.